Hello everyone, I am Manvi from Zanonko.io and it is an honor to have Dr. Shubham Jain with us on our platform. First, I would like to introduce our company Zanonko.io and Love Heals Cancer. We guide cancer patients in their treatment journey. Our company aims to extend the life and improve the quality of life for cancer patients through an integrative oncology treatment, which includes both complementary treatments as well as medical treatment. We provide end-to-end -end care to the patients and also help with the counseling, healing sessions, Ayurveda, medical cannabis, anti-cancer diet, awareness sessions, and palliative care. This session is going to be all about spreading awareness and educated cancer patients. And for that, we have Dr. Shubham Jain with us. Let me take this opportunity to introduce him. Dr. Jain is a surgical oncologist with more than 10 years of experience in oncology. He is currently practicing at Max Super Speciality Hospital at New Delhi. Thank you for taking out time from, from your busy schedule, sir. And uh, you, can, you will be answering many queries. And uh, uh, it, I'm sure it's going to be a lot of informative for the people listening to it. So uh, I would first like you to give a short introduction about yourself. And then we'll continue with the Q&A session. Um, thank you, Manvi. Uh, thank you for having me here today. Uh, I am working as a surgical oncologist. I've uh, done my training from Tata Hospital, Bombay. It's been more than around 10 years now that I've been practicing oncosurgery as of now. Uh, in my practice, uh, I see a lot of patients uh, and obviously they have a lot of queries because most of the times people are facing such a situation for the first time. They have not seen or heard anybody uh, go through it or there are a lot of myths uh, when it comes to cancer uh, so it is very important for the patient to know and understand what exactly their uh, disease is and what treatment outcomes can they expect so such sessions i think help clarify those doubts a lot for the patients and gives them confidence to go forward with the treatment that's great uh, so I'll start with some questions. So my first question is that what are the different types of surgeries that are performed for cancer treatment and how do you choose a suitable surgery for a patient? So Manvi, when it comes to surgery for cancer, it is not just to remove the cancer as is conventionally thought. It could be for many complaints uh, around the cancer diagnosis for the patient uh, that may be worrying the patient and can be addressed surgically. So, for example, if somebody has uh, many relatives in the family who have been affected with cancer and somebody doesn't want to go through that pain, so one may opt for a prophylactic surgery, something like what Angelina Jolie had done, wherein yeah, she was like a preventive surgery. Kind of a preventive surgery. Then a surgery can be. Uh, uh, it can help to relieve a patient of symptoms which can arise as a result of uh, the complications of the cancer itself at an advanced stage, wherein the uh, surgery will not aim to cure the disease or remove the disease per se, but it will help uh, relieve the patient of the problems that an incurable cancer is causing. So, for example, if a patient with a metastatic cancer has uh, uh, bowel obstruction or is not able to eat, probably we can through some surgery, we can provide a more, uh, means of uh, allowing the patient to eat. In addition to these, obviously, there are surgeries which uh, aim to remove the cancer. So those are curative surgeries. And uh, depending on the extent of disease and what uh, organ of the body they impact, different surgeries uh, can be there. Uh, there are also approaches to the surgery. So the conventional approach to a surgery is an open surgery where a patient expects a big incision uh, expects uh, some degree of pain, some degree of hospitalization, needing hospitalization for some uh, a few days. Uh, a more advanced version of that is a minimal access surgery, where we try to do uh, surgery, the same effectiveness with a smaller incision so that there is lesser pain, the patient can be uh, can recover faster, can be sent home faster. So these minimal access surgeries can happen either laparoscopically or with a robot assisted platform. Yeah, so actually my next question is around robotic surgery itself. So can you share something about robotic cancer surgery and uh, what are your thoughts about this new technique? 
So robotic cancer surgery basically is a surgery that's a minimal access uh, procedure performed with a robot. Now, uh, with a robot, when I say it's a surgeon who's uh, maneuvering the robot, a robot doesn't do it automatically. But the uh, finesse that we get uh, by using a robot, because the arms of the robot are in millimeters compared to a uh, human hand. So the same surgery can be performed with the same effectiveness, but with smaller incisions. So it becomes very precise and very effective and with a lesser incision. So the pain is lesser, the recovery is faster for such patients. Okay, so that's great. So Dr. Jain, uh, what comes under the purview of thoracic cancer and uh, how common is it? So thoracic cancers are uh, the cancers affecting the organs of the chest. Uh, that includes the lungs, that includes the food pipe, that may include various other organs within the chest. Uh, lung cancers, as we all know, are one of the most common cancers that causes death due to cancer. Uh, and cancers are uh, cancer. Yes. Yeah, can Thoracic that. cancers are cancers that affect mainly the organs within the chest, uh, such as the lungs, the food pipe, uh, uh, the thymus. These are organs which are mainly located within the chest. And as we all know that lung cancers are probably one of the most common cancers that affect uh, humans and the most common cause of death due to cancers. Um, unfortunately, many a times we see that uh, these cancers, because they're within the chest cavity, uh, get detected at very advanced stages. They're many a times beyond the realm of a cure with a surgery alone. So for this reason, the surgery for thoracic cancer is probably not as common as a breast cancer, as you would have heard, but these are very common cancers. Yeah. So um, what about breast cancer? It's it, it has been seen that it's also a very common cancer type and uh, what according to you can help prevent a person uh, from uh, you know from uh, having breast cancer and what is the line of treatment recommended if someone has it so like any other cancer the best weapon that anybody has against uh, cancer is awareness science has progressed from the last many decades to a stage where we can detect cancer early and we know that the earlier we detect the cancer the easier it is to treat the more effective the treatment is towards a cure so the best safeguard i feel in today's day and time is uh, awareness of cancer and how to detect it so the common symptoms of such cancers now if i am to take the example of a breast cancer so any uh, painless lump in the breast is a worrying sign and should not be ignored. One should definitely visit a doctor or an oncologist uh, so that it can be tested and appropriately treated. Uh, some other danger signs are if there is any change in the appearance of the breast, if there is any bloody nipple discharge, or there are any other swellings either in the armpit. So these are some of the worrying signs that one should be aware of. As far as the treatment is concerned, the treatment depends on the stage at which a disease is detected. Uh, as I was telling before, the purpose of surgery is to remove the disease on that given day and time. The purpose of a chemotherapy and radiotherapy can be to reduce the chances of the disease coming back in the long term. So depending on what stage the patient is in, it will probably be wise to uh, do a combination of these various modalities, surgery, chemotherapy, and radiotherapy, so as to control the disease today and to reduce the risk of a recurrence later. Yeah, so those are actually some good tips that you uh, said, and I completely agree that uh, awareness is the key to uh, preventing cancer. So uh, my next question would be that, what are your thoughts about advanced surgical recovery program and how does it help a patient? So advanced surgery recovery program or the enhanced uh, recovery after surgery program is uh, basically a protocol that is uh, followed in our hospital, uh, which uh, enhances the recovery or the uh, sooner we can put the patient back to their normal lives. 
so various uh, techniques are involved in this for example if a patient is to undergo lung surgery so we uh, and he is a smoker so we ask the patient advise him to quit smoking we uh, give them physiotherapy sessions uh, so that they build up a particular level of fitness prior to the surgery and then following surgery also we follow it up so that the patient comes back to his or her normal life immediately following the surgery as soon as possible we try uh, to involve the physiotherapists the dietitians everybody as uh, so well as to give a holistic care to the patient with the seras protocol yeah and uh, if we would talk about the recovery then uh... to what percentage do you think it is helping the cancer patient uh, if they follow it if they follow this program so, by a lot by a lot we've seen across all cancers the uh, hospital admission time has reduced significantly uh, on following the eras protocol especially our patients with gastrointestinal cancers um and gynecological cancers so these patients do definitely benefit from the eras protocol that we follow okay that's great so uh, and my next question is around stomach cancer and uh, i would, uh, i just wanted to ask that what is the suggested line of treatment for a stomach cancer patient and uh, are there any preventive measures that uh, are required for the surgery so again uh, like any other cancer the treatment is a combination of a surgery chemotherapy and radiotherapy and is best determined by the stage uh the stage can be assessed by various investigations uh, we try to do accurate stage determination by preoperative workup including the ct scans or any other imaging modality so as to be determine the stage and based on that it can be a combination of chemotherapy initially followed by surgery and followed by chemotherapy later speaking specifically of stomach cancers uh as part uh, as to your second question of what can be the preventive steps so similarly cancer awareness is the most important uh thing to be done anybody uh, developing symptoms of dyspepsia persistent acidity weight loss not being able to eat uh, vom- uh having blood in vomitus these should not be ignored and should be definitely evaluated by a patient okay so uh, a person uh, having these uh, symptoms is somewhere found to be in stage 1 or 2 of stomach cancer right? yes yes so if these symptoms are det- uh, matlab investigated early we may be finding these patients in stage 1 or 2 however there are certain uh, signs where the patient has lost a significant amount of weight or there is a generalized abdominal distension so these are uh, particular symptoms where the patient may be possibly in advanced stages which would be 3 or 4 as well okay and what about metastatic uh, stomach cancer and where does it mostly spread to so as i was saying uh, metastatic stomach cancer usually affects either the liver or it could affect the inner lining of the abdomen which is called the peritoneum now what happens when it affects the liver is the patient experiences loss of appetite uh, the patient will not be feeling hungry uh, the patient uh, may develop jaundice and in comparison to that if the disease affects the inner lining of the abdomen it may start producing fluid in the abdomen which can cause a, a distension of the abdomen uh, apart from that Uh, the, these patients may develop significant weight loss they appear very malnourished cachexic is what we call it technically so these are certain signs that point towards an advanced stage of some cancer if a patient is having okay okay so the next question is that what all uh, precautions do you suggest for a patient who is going to undergo a surgery and uh, how does we have already somehow discussed about the route to recovery so yeah what are precautions that are necessary for a patient undergoing surgery so a patient for a patient undergoing surgery obviously they need to be in good health so as to recover from the surgery faster they should take care of their nutrition they should take care of their physical fitness uh surgery is depending on what organ is being affected uh, could be either a surface surgery for example for a breast cancer which usually does not take much time to recover for the patient but something which is being done inside the body for example like 
uh, the surgery of lung cancer the, or the surgery for food pipe or the surgery for stomach cancer these generally take a toll on the patient and for this reason it is advisable that if a patient is a smoker they should quit smoking immediately uh, in the preparation for the surgery uh, they should start eating healthy high protein diet so that they have a good amount of uh, immunity in the body and they can recover faster um, so these are some of the precautions that can be taken okay that would be helpful uh, so now talking about your medical experience you have more than 10 years of medical experience uh, so what is the most challenging or distinct case that you have come across i'm sorry can you please repeat most challenging or distinct case okay so uh, we i do come across challenging and distinct cases all along but something to share of recent i operated on a 26 year old girl who was having a roughly a 22 cm size uh, mass in the right, the right side of the chest so it was almost like a newborn within the chest uh, and because of that she was not able to breathe and uh, she was having breathing difficulty uh, she was very skinny her weight was very less probably because the mass was compressing on the lung and she was not able to breathe uh so it was a very challenging case uh, where we had to cut open the chest and we had to actually remove the tumor but uh, the patient has recovered well thankfully and uh, hopefully she stays healthy we'll be following her up so another important thing that i wanted to uh, tell through your medium was the importance of follow up uh, for any surgery who's uh, any person who's undergone treatment many a times it happens that a patient who's uh, been treated once they forget about the disease and they move on with their life which is very normal and human thing to happen but we should not forget about a follow up that needs to be done every 3 months in. the purpose of this follow up is not just a aimed at uh, detecting a recurrence early so if the disease were to recur uh, it can be treated early earlier and more effectively what a follow up also gives us is an opportunity for uh, the patient to convey the problems that they are facing because of the side effects of treatment many a times the patient would not know whether a particular side effect is happening as a result of the treatment or is it happening in otherwise so such follow up sessions help in uh, that confidence building with the uh, doctor as well wherein these side effects are managed um, many a times it happens that uh, the patients are in a position and they uh, then uh, blame the cancer uh, for coming back in a way not realizing that had it been detected earlier in time probably it would have been much easily treatable definitely so uh, this is something related to early detection as well and uh, in the case that you just told where the 23 year old had a big tumor so why do you feel that uh, people are not able to detect uh, such uh, you know such symptoms where you have such a big tumor growing inside so uh, how can it be so for uh, example in, in this patient only it, it is human tendency to attribute vague symptoms to something which is um, not worrying immediately Uh, so somebody who was like this girl only who was having breathlessness she used to attribute it to her weak stature she used to feel that she is weak and that is why she is not able to do uh, uh, much physical activity not realizing that there was actually a tumor sitting inside it was incidentally because of the covid that she got a ct scan done and that that is how it triggered uh, the chain of events for her so Uh, that is why it sh- it should be stressed upon that not to take any symptom especially something that is new developing in the body as lightly and to ignore it you should definitely consult a physician uh, i think it may uh, result in some few extra tests but at least you don't have the risk of detecting something at a later stage or date than what it can be detected at yeah So, uh, can you highlight the importance of a healthy lifestyle to prevent cancer? I'm sorry. Can you please repeat the question? 
Yeah. So my question is that uh, can you highlight the importance of a healthy lifestyle so that people can prevent cancer? So leading a healthy lifestyle is absolutely important. Uh, the WHO recommends certain level of uh, physical activity in a week. Uh, eating a healthy, nutritious diet is very important. Uh, there are various factors around us that can cause cancer. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, we are losing you again. For now. example, who's within that environment of uh, is the network better now? Yeah, now I can hear you. You, I completely lost you. Okay. Okay. So what I'm saying is that uh, leading a healthy lifestyle is absolutely necessary uh, in order to keep your risk of cancer at bay. A healthy lifestyle not just means uh, visiting the doctor regularly, but it also means something that one person can do for him, him or herself. Uh, that includes regular physical activity uh, as recommended by the WHO to reduce the risk. Now, what it does is it not just improves the cardiac function, it keeps the person fit, it reduces the level of fat in the body. And these are all factors which are associated with increased risk of one cancer or the other. Similarly, reducing on the tobacco intake is a healthy lifestyle modification that can reduce the risk of uh, oral cancers, it can reduce the risk of lung cancers. Avoiding alcohol, that's another uh, lifestyle uh, hack that can help reduce the risk of cancer. Uh, eating good nutritious food, green leafy vegetables, been told for long, uh, that also helps uh, in uh, the body. Having low meat content in the diet reduces the risk of certain intestinal cancers. So these are some of the lifestyle modifications that we can actively adopt to reduce the risk of uh, cancers. Obviously, it does not uh, make any person immune to cancers, but uh, these are certain modifications that are more welcome for the body and probably may help keep the risk of cancers at bay. Okay, those are actually very helpful tips. So my last question uh, now would be that how do you feel that the non-co.io is helping him for the cause of cancer? So in the current COVID uh, era, digital healthcare platforms such as zenonco.io, I feel definitely connect the patients more uh, to a healthcare professional uh, than would have been feasible for a person uh, to come to a hospital. Even today, we have many patients who are hesitant to come to a hospital. So uh, such platforms, I feel, are need of the hour, and they definitely bring it, uh, bring the healthcare facility much closer to the patient. Uh, I can consult a patient probably in any part of India right now and suggest investigations that can help me determine what uh, the treatment outcomes are expected to be for their patient and what uh, treatment resource they can utilize within their vicinity. So I think it is the best utilization of the digital platform or the digitization of our uh, environments right now. Okay. So thank you so much, sir, um, for your valuable inputs and for being with us to do this uh, in this knowledge sharing session. Uh, you took out time for this and you have shared so many insights with us, which I'm sure is going to be of benefit for so many people. So thank you once again from Zanonko.io and Now Please Cancer for this insightful session on our platform. Thank you. It was a pleasure to join you.